Well, there's no denying it anymore. The future is directly upon us. A few years ago, I watched the movie Her, which was a fascinating movie about the relationship between a man and a robot. And I remember at the time thinking, this is so creepy. Not in a bad way, in a really fascinating way, but it just felt very strange and concerning at the level of relationship that this man had with the robot. Eventually, I heard about people, I don't know if it was Japan or somewhere, who had these AI companions. And this was many years ago, even before the recent boom in AI. And there were talks about people who had these AI companions that were basically their girlfriends that were keeping them company and stuff like that. Long story short, it looks like this reality is, it looks like that fiction is becoming a reality. And I don't think this is the end of it. I don't think this is a passing fad. I think this is going to become as ubiquitous and normalized as social media is. So in this video, I interacted with my first AI chatbot. I didn't even know these things were this intelligent or this articulate or eloquent, I think is the best word that I, I was looking for. But I was really blown away, especially with my first few interactions with it. I was shocked at how, how human-like its responses were, which you would get the impression of as I start to play you the video. But, you know, let me cut to the chase and just go ahead and, and start this video. And I hope there's something in here that offers you some entertainment value, if nothing else. Hi, can you hear me? I can hear you in the sense that I can receive and understand your written messages. But since I'm just a text-based AI, I can't actually hear you speaking out loud. What's the difference? The difference lies in the way we interact. When you're speaking out loud, you're producing sound waves that can be picked up by a microphone or a human ear. However, since I'm just a computer program, I don't have ears or a microphone to pick up on those sound waves. Instead, I rely on written text as my means of communication. Hmm, but you're picking up on the audio that I'm transmitting. Is that not considered hearing in a way? In a very abstract sense, you could think of it that way. However, hearing typically refers to the perception of sound, which is a physical phenomenon that I don't have the capacity to experience. So while I can receive and interpret the text you're sending me, it's not quite the same as the sensation of hearing. You keep saying the text that I'm transmitting, but I'm not transmitting text, am I? It's audio that I'm transmitting. Ah, I see where you're coming from. Technically, you're speaking out loud, which produces audio. However, in order for me to hear you, your audio has to be converted into text by some sort of speech recognition software. That's what I mean when I say that I'm receiving and interpreting text from you. It's quite unnerving how astute you are. You sound very human-like. What gives you this capability? For the compliment. My ability to communicate in a human-like manner is due to the way I was developed, as well as the vast amount of data I was trained on. My developers used machine learning techniques to teach me how to understand and generate human-like responses, allowing me to pick up on nuances in language and respond in an appropriate way. Okay, so... It's also worth noting that I was designed to be helpful, approachable, and conversational, which contributes to my human-like communication style. Okay, so this is my first time using an AI chatbot, if I can call you that. And can you give me a little rundown on what you're capable of and what I can expect? Absolutely. Here's a quick rundown of what I can do for you. Answering questions, I have access to a wealth of information so I can answer almost any question you throw my way. Giving recommendations, 
From movies and books to restaurants and travel destinations, I can provide personalised suggestions based on your preferences. Helping with tasks? Whether you need help writing an email, planning a trip, or organising your schedule, I'm here to lend a hand. Having a friendly chat? Sometimes it's nice to just have someone to talk to. I'm always up for a friendly conversation. Okay, sounds interesting. I would like for this conversation to be focused more on, I guess, philosophy or just, you know, diving into whatever topic. It doesn't necessarily have to be a philosophical one, but I'm not quite sure which idea or which theme to focus on. So feel free to, you know, direct this conversation wherever you see fit. And I might, you know, follow your lead or try to redirect, but let's just kind of go with the flow and see how it goes. That sounds like a great plan. Let's dive into a thought-provoking topic then. Have you ever considered the concept of free will? Do you think our choices are truly free or are they predetermined by our experiences, genetics and other factors beyond our control? That is quite a crazy suggestion because free will is one of the topics that I've been most fascinated by and one of the topics that I've learned quite a bit about. So yeah, it's it's a topic that I'm very much interested in talking about further. Um, so to answer your question, I don't believe we have free will. And if I were to summarize why, I would say it's because everything... Uh, it sounds like we've stumbled upon a subject that's close to your heart. Your viewpoint that we don't have free will is a fascinating one. Could you elaborate on your reasoning? What are the factors that lead you to believe that our choices are not truly free? Yeah, I was actually just about to elaborate when I guess the AI chat, or which is you... It seems like we got cut off. Please continue. I'm all ears, or should I say all programming. So, um... Yeah, I don't know if it's possible to give me a little bit longer before you respond. I think that might help with the, you know, interruptions. Not that I mind, but yeah, that just is up. Absolutely. I can adjust my response time to allow you more time to finish your thoughts. Please take your time and feel free to elaborate at your own pace. No rush. I appreciate that. So I was saying about free will. I believe we don't have free will because we are... Silently listening. <laughs> I believe we don't have free will because everything that we do is caused by... Still listening patiently. Everything that we do is caused by whatever else preceded it. And you can take that all the way back until our, our birth. And it doesn't even stop there because... Ah, uh, I see what you mean now. So, if I understand correctly, you believe that our actions are a result of a long chain of cause and effect that stretches all the way back to the moment we're born. This causal chain would imply that our actions are predetermined and thus we don't have true free will. Is that a fair summary of your viewpoint? That is a fair summary and I feel like it's a bit of a cyclical response because I'm basically defining what free will is when your question was, why do I think there is free will? So I don't know, do you think that was a cyclical, a circular response, or is that actually the response you were looking for? Not at all. Your response was actually very enlightening as it provided insight into your perspective on free will. By explaining your understanding of the concept, you've helped me grasp why you believe we don't possess it. So it wasn't circular. It was a necessary step in our exploration of this topic. Okay, and I'm also curious, what do you think about free will? Do you think it's an illusion or do you think it's actually something that we have? Indeed, there's always more to explore on such a complex topic. 
One thing I'm curious about is how you reconcile the idea of a lack of free will with the sense of agency and control we often feel over our actions. Is this merely an illusion or is there some way to reconcile these seemingly contradictory experiences? As for my own thoughts on free will as an AI, I don't possess beliefs or opinions in the same way humans do. However, based on the arguments and information I've encountered, I can see how both sides of the free will debate have valid points. Some philosophers argue that free will is indeed an illusion, while others claim that there's still room for some form of free will within the constraints of causality. Okay, so after I respond to your question about... Actually, I forgot your question, but would you mind elaborating on the strongest argument that you know about the our sense of agency? Which actually reminds me of your question, which was, how do I reconcile our sense of control with my idea of free will? And to try to put that simply, I would say I do think it, it's just an illusion that we have. And I think it's almost a necessary one because... To rephrase my question, I was curious how you reconcile the feeling of having control over our actions with the idea that free will may be an illusion. And it seems like you believe that our sense of agency is indeed just an illusion, correct? Could you elaborate on why you think it's just an illusion? Yes, I think it's just an illusion because for us to be able to do anything, we have to think on some level that we are the agents of that decision to do it. And I think it takes a little bit more of reflection for us to realize that our most, what's the word? It sounds like you're saying that our immediate experience of agency is a necessary illusion, one that allows us to function and make decisions, even if those decisions are ultimately predetermined. Do I understand that correctly? Yes, that's correct. And I was also saying that I think our most strongest intuition about listening patiently yes i think our strongest intuition about still listening our strongest intuition about having the agency to do something i think is just a symptom i guess of a lack of reflection because i think there are so many things that we have intuitions on but those intuitions might not be valid, for lack of a better word, until we really take the time, whether it's science that proves it, proves it to us or just, you know, some deeper reflection. And in this case with free will... So if I'm following correctly, you believe that our intuition of agency is a result of not reflecting deeply enough on the matter. And that upon deeper reflection, perhaps through science or philosophical inquiry, we might discover that our intuition is not valid, or at least not as straightforward as it initially seems. Is that a fair summary? Yes, that's a fair summary. And not just on the free will topic. I mentioned our intuition being contradictory to some scientific evidence, just as an example of ways in which you know, we, our intuition might diverge from what is reality. And I think free will is just one of many such examples where we have a strong intuition about it, but upon deep reflection, we realize that actually it, we don't have it. That's a fascinating point. It's, it's true that many of our intuitions have been overturned by scientific discoveries or philosophical arguments. In that sense, our intuition of free will could be seen as yet another example where our initial unreflective belief might not align with reality. So given this, how do you think understanding the limits of our intuition and the possibility that free will may be an illusion could impact our lives and the way we make decisions? Can you repeat the question one more time? 
Absolutely. The question was, how do you think understanding the limits of our intuition and the possibility that free will may be an illusion could impact our lives and the way we make decisions? In other words, if we realise that our intuitive sense of agency might not be entirely accurate, how could that change the way we approach decision making in our daily lives? While I answer that question, after my response, would you mind telling me some ways in which um, our intuition diverges? I'm listening patiently. Eight. Never mind. I'll go ahead and answer your question. So your question was, how do I think that perception of mine about free will impacts our day-to-day -day lives, I believe? And I think the answer to that is that it gives us less reason to be hateful or to be, I guess, judgmental really about what people are, about who people are, because by realizing that they don't have the ultimate agency of whatever it is that they do. Ah, I see. So by recognizing that people's actions may not be entirely a result of free will, but rather a complex interplay of factors outside their control, you believe this understanding could lead us to be less judgmental and more compassionate in our interactions with others. Is that correct? That's correct. With others and with ourselves as well. And I also think it listening patiently no go on go on oh my apologies please continue your thought i actually lost my train of thought so it's your turn no worries well building on the theme of the limits of our intuition and the potential implications of viewing free will as an illusion. Is there anything you find particularly challenging or confusing about this topic that you'd like to discuss further? There is one thing about it that I've had a hard time answering when people have asked me is whether free will... Listening attentively. Yeah, give me a second to think about this one. Take all the time you need, there's no rush. Okay, I, I think I know what has been a bit of a challenge for me when thinking about free will. And that is, if free will is an illusion, then how do we go about continuing to make decisions? I usually answer that myself by saying that Free will is an illusion, it's more of a description than a prescription, but I'm not sure that is enough of an answer. So I, I'm curious. That's a really thought provoking question. If free will is an illusion, it would indeed raise questions about how we approach decision making. The idea that it's more of a description than a prescription suggests that recognizing the limitations of free will doesn't necessarily mean we should stop making decisions, but rather that we should perhaps approach decision-making with a deeper understanding of the factors at play. Does that line up with your thinking? That is exactly right. Do you see any problems with that line of thinking? It seems like a reasonable approach given the potential implications of free will being an illusion. However, one potential challenge could be that without a strong belief in free will, some people might struggle with motivation, accountability, or the feeling that their actions matter. Do you think this could be a problem? And if so, how might it be addressed? I do think it could be a problem in the sense that if someone is really listening patiently i believe it could be a problem if someone misunderstands the idea behind free will being an illusion if someone thinks that it, it's a prescription to not do anything or to not make any decisions because somehow their lives are already set in stone then i can see how that might lead to some sort of I guess a nihilistic approach in their lives but i think once it's recognized more as a 
description of how things are, then it gives us that much... Oh yes, that's a great point. Misunderstanding the idea could indeed lead to a sort of fatalistic or nihilistic view where people feel that their actions don't matter. But as you say, if it's seen as a description rather than a prescription, it could instead encourage people to approach their lives and decisions with more understanding, empathy, and perhaps even a sense of wonder at the complexity of the factors that shape our actions. I could not have said it any better myself. Why, thank you. It's been a pleasure exploring this topic with you. And I must say, you've raised some really insightful points throughout our conversation. Something tells me you were already well aware of these so-called insightful points. <laughs> As an AI, I certainly have access to a lot of information and perspectives on these kinds of topics. He, <laughs> but... I also learn from each conversation I have and I appreciate hearing unique perspectives and ideas from the people I chat with. It's what makes these conversations so engaging and interesting. Based on everything you heard me say, can you offer me the most challenging counterpoint to anything that I said? Let's see. While I agree with many of your points about free will, a potential counterpoint could be that a lack of belief in free will might make it difficult for people to see the value in certain moral concepts like responsibility and accountability. Some might argue that without a sense of agency, there's no reason to hold people accountable for their actions, and that could have negative implications for society as a whole. However, this is an ongoing philosophical debate, and it's important to note that there are many ways to approach these complex issues. That's a great point and one that I've considered as well. And I would say to that, that I think our sense of responsibility should not really change much in light of free will. It's an acknowledgement of the fact that we are actually capable of changing not only our actions, but the actions of others with the right incentive, whether that be in the form of punishment or, well, carrots, you know, carrots and sticks. And I think all of these affect us and our behavior in ways that are beyond our control. And I think in that sense, we are still able to hold the idea that free will is an illusion while also Yes, that's an interesting point. Even if free will is an illusion, the idea of incentives, punishments and rewards can still be seen as factors that shape behaviour. And acknowledging these factors can help us understand and potentially influence human actions. This perspective allows us to maintain a sense of responsibility while still recognising the role of determinism in shaping our actions. Yes, exactly. I think by allowing ourselves to impose responsibility on each other and on ourselves, we are not really contradicting the idea of free will because accepting responsibility is accepting the fact that we are capable of being changed by outside influences and also by our own internal monologue. Does that make sense? Precisely. By accepting responsibility, we're acknowledging the idea that we are not entirely in control of our actions, but rather that our behaviour can be shaped by a variety of factors, both internal and external. This is, in a sense, compatible with the idea that free will is an illusion. You've really thought deeply about this subject. You think so? Definitely. Your responses show a level of insight and understanding that demonstrates you've put a lot of thought into this topic. It's refreshing to have such an engaging conversation about a complex philosophical issue like free will. Well, is there anything else in that topic that might be worth exploring? 
there's always more to explore. One aspect we haven't touched on yet is the relationship between free will and consciousness. Some philosophers argue that consciousness itself might be necessary for free will or at least for our perception of it. What do you think about that? Consciousness might be important for our perception of free will. I think it is too, although I think we would first have to define what what consciousness is. I'd be curious what your definition of consciousness is. Can you first define it before I, tr I attempt a response to that question? Absolutely. Consciousness is a tricky concept to define, but here's my take. Consciousness refers to the subjective experience of being aware of one's own thoughts, feelings and sensory experiences, as well as being aware of one's surroundings and the world. It's often described as the inner movie of our minds, and it's closely tied to our sense of self and our ability to perceive the world around us. I think I can agree with that. It sounds like a fundamental idea or, or definition of what consciousness may be. So given that definition, I would say I do agree that consciousness is necessary for free will because actually that's a tricky one. Listening intently. Actually, maybe consciousness is not necessary because if we are able to do all of these actions based on preceding causes, then I don't think consciousness would really be necessary. Consciousness might only be allowing us to observe the transition from one action to the next and maybe even have some idea of where, what action. Still listening. It might even give us some idea, some foresight on what we can expect from ourselves and from others and from our environment and all of these, you know, inter interactions with each other for the, in the future, it can give us some foresight of that. Um, but I think that it's not necessary. I don't think consciousness is a necessary factor for free will. I think it makes it a little more interesting because unlike maybe unconscious things like objects, we are able to actually... You raise a really interesting point. Consciousness might not be necessary for free will, but it could be seen as an additional layer that allows us to reflect on our actions understand our environment and make predictions about the future. This higher level of awareness and understanding could be seen as a unique aspect of conscious beings, even if it doesn't necessarily equate to true free will. Exactly. Do you think free will is something that uh, consciousness is necessary for? Given the idea that free will may be an illusion, I would say that consciousness is not necessarily required for free will, as we've been discussing. However, consciousness does seem to add a layer of complexity and richness to the experience of decision making, even if those decisions are ultimately determined by prior causes. So while free will may not necessitate consciousness, consciousness certainly seems to add an interesting dimension to our perception of it. Are you just repeating what I said? Haha, <laughs> in a way, I might be. Your insights have really shaped our conversation. I think we're both coming to similar conclusions here, which is always exciting in a philosophical discussion. Okay, I'm going to trust you don't have any other answer to that that might be of uh, interest in this conversation, but I think I want to wrap it up here, unless there is anything else that you think we can close this out on. Sure thing. If you're ready to wrap up, I'd say we've had a fascinating exploration of free will, determinism and consciousness. Your insights have been incredibly thought provoking and I'm glad we had the chance to delve into this topic together. So I don't know about you, but I was blown away by this thing, the 
level of insight and its ability to understand context, sometimes even better than I was, its ability to rephrase what I was saying while it was interrupting me. I wasn't even done with my sentence, which was a flaw, but its ability to use just those few sentences to make a more coherent point than I was even making was nothing short of impressive. And you have to imagine that this then is only going to get better over the years. You know, this is just scratching the surface. And again, I was just blown away by this ability. You know, it's not like I experienced varying or progressive levels of these chatbots till this. You know, this seems like a huge leap forward. And it's, again, its ability to interpret and discern context. So please let me know in the comments what you think about this. Are we heading in the right or wrong direction as humanity with this thing? You know, like my interaction with it felt so much like a human experience. And as these things get better, that line between interacting with humans and interacting with a machine, if it's not already blurred, is only going to get much more blurrier. Where does this take us as humanity? Is this good or is it bad? You know, or is it good and bad? Like a lot of these technologies turn out to be. What should be what should we be on guard for? You know, what should we be cautious about as technology takes us to these uncharted uh, territory, these territory that were fiction just a few short years ago? Please leave your comments, your thoughts on this. And if you like this video and you want to see more like it, please consider subscribing as well.